Don't get knocked out, my friend. In this video, I wanna share with you five ways to avoid getting knocked out. Stick around. Getting knocked out's a terrible thing. It happens to people who are both looking for it and those who are not looking for it. But if you suffer a terrible enough knockout, your chin is never gonna be the same. And we see this with professional fighters and we need our chin in life. It's also a very dangerous thing to be knocked out on the street because it can lead to so many other things. Here's the good news. 99.999% of the time, getting knocked out on the street is avoidable. This all may seem Captain Obvious, but I just don't think it is for a lot of people because my internet feed is full of people getting knocked out all day, every day. So let's start with number one and what I believe to be the most obvious. One way you can avoid being knocked out is watch your mouth. Choose your words carefully. A lot of people walk around writing checks with their mouth that their behind can't cash, and we all know it's true. There's two primary ways that our mouth can get us knocked out. Well, one is obvious, you know, slandering other people, talking a lot of trash, being a heckler, just running your mouth and pushing somebody's buttons enough to the point where they get in your face and swing on you. There's a lot of foolish people out there who believe they can run their mouth for free, and it's rarely free nowadays, especially. But then there are those who use their mouths to stand up for what's right, and they never thought it would get them in a fight. They were just speaking the truth, saying what they felt needed to be said, and they get knocked out. Sometimes in our day-to-day -day life, we have to use our mouth to confront people for things. It might be, you know, something that somebody's doing that's not right. We may have to confront a perfect stranger over something. You know, you have to understand that some people don't want to hear your correction. And if you're going to verbally confront people, you better be willing to back it up. You better have a way to defend yourself because some people will just cut straight to the chase. They're not going to have words with you. They'll swing on you. I tell my wife and kids all the time, don't get me in a fight. Don't say something to somebody that's going to rile them up and then I have to defend you. We got to choose our words very carefully out on the streets. You know, there's a time to stand up for something and there's a time to keep your mouth shut. You really got to get good at picking your battles, man, because some people go from zero to a hundred and it's just not always worth saying what you got to say. That doesn't mean we have to always be quiet. Sometimes we have to speak up, but be prepared for anything. The second thing that'll get somebody knocked out in a heartbeat is getting in someone's face. People just don't get it. I watch so much fight footage and people just don't get it, man. Their pride causes them to get face to face with somebody and then out of nowhere comes a right hook. Watch how quick this can go bad. I saw a guy get his face split with a razor because he was standing so close to somebody who had his hands in his pockets had a box cutter in his hands, standing too close. People get up in people's face, man, like, what, what are you gonna do? Next thing you know, they're laying on the ground. If you're having words or some sort of altercation with someone, don't get in their face. Try to resolve the situation and get out of there. Don't be fighting on the street. Ain't no money in it anyway. Only the potential of getting hurt, hurting someone, going to court, maybe even going to jail. It's not worth it, young men. Listen to me, look at me in the eyeballs. It's not worth it. You don't have to fight, don't fight. The third thing that'll get somebody knocked out in a heartbeat is going toe to toe with somebody, punch for punch, swing for swing. This is not always the wisest thing to do, even in professional fighting. Sometimes fighters will do it and it's entertaining and the promoters love it. Take Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje. For example, two bangers, man, two, two lightweight knockout artists, man, in their recent BMF fight that they were having, Max Holloway calls Justin Gaethje to the center of the octagon, man, and they start throwing down punch for punch. And it was anybody's fight at that point. It just happened to be Max Holloway's day. Justin Gaethje can knock out just as much as he can. If Justin Gaethje would have landed on a button, it would have been Max laying on the ground. My point is this. It doesn't matter how good you can fight. It doesn't matter how good the other person can fight. If you go toe-to-toe -to -toe 
with somebody, your chances of getting knocked out are way up here, man. They're like 50, 50. And oftentimes that's not the best way to fight anyway. When you get into a situation with another person where the both of you are blasting punches out, swinging for the fences, you know, eventually somebody's gonna get caught. I mean, where do you think we get phrases like stick and move? In so many scenarios, it's a bad choice to just go toe to toe with punches. And even if you're equal with somebody, you have a very high chance of being the one that's gonna be laying on the ground. If you gotta fight somebody, you need to find another way than just standing there and exchanging blows, man. This is about survival. We're not two kids in the schoolyard trying to work things out. This is the real world, it's the streets. We don't fight fair, we wanna come home safely. Everybody wants to be a fighter nowadays, man. It's like you got all these fighting organizations, you got all these bare knuckle things going on. I get it, man, that there's a savagery on the inside of us, especially us guys, and you know we wanna get out there and prove ourselves, man, but we've gotta understand that a lot of people who get into fighting for money or fighting professionally, did so because that's how they had to survive but it ought not be like a first level go-to for your average person and i think a lot of people you know they see the the rock stars in the ufc and all these fighting organizations and they find an opportunity to test themselves on the street and they throw themselves in the fire and they get hurt i've always been for good fight training good training with training partners man but like people are out here testing themselves in the real world without the knowledge of what can happen to them or what they can do to somebody else in the long run, especially. Something else that'll get somebody knocked out all day, every day is keeping their chin up. If you get into an altercation with somebody and you have to fight, you gotta keep your chin down. You can't leave your chin up. You'll get clipped, you'll get laid out. With his chin up like this, it's a lot easier to take him out. Also too, even with a straight punch with his chin, up like that, that would be crunching. You need to keep that chin down. The next thing that'll get somebody knocked out is just walking around out here in society asleep at the wheel. From about 2012 on in the news, from what I can remember, you've had young people going around playing the knockout game. Simply put, they're going around sucker punching unsuspecting victims. I've seen video footage of women being knocked out. I've seen video footage of grown men being knocked out by some teenager. Imagine if he's not paying attention and this happens. I mean, he's gonna fall. You gotta pay attention to who's around you. People will film you nowadays while their buddy comes around the corner and hits you. I'm sure there's a much longer list than these five things, but I believe these five things are especially crucial. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Have you ever been a victim of any of these things? I'd love for you to share your story. Take care.